Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we're going to be painting a beautiful Highland cow. So we're going to do a really awesome abstract background, make it very simple for beginners. Um, let me give you a view of the traceable, so this does come with your painting kit, and we do have a very wonderful painting kits for beginners. They absolutely have all of your supplies that you need to do it from beginning to end. The only thing you have to provide is some water, but other than that we give you everything else. So let's talk about this first. So we do have a separate tutorial on YouTube that just specifically goes over this, but I'm going to go ahead and go over this with you here today too. So I've got this, a little bit of this already pre-done if you will, so you don't have to just sit there and watch me draw for a really long time. But your uh, 8 by 10 canvas that comes with the kit is here. This is your traceable. This is the transfer paper. And what I do is your kit comes with some washi tape. So the first thing I do, and I went ahead and trimmed this out to match the same size of the canvas. And then I just will use that washi tape, or you can use scotch tape at home too. And I only tape the very top. So I did about three up here at the very top. Also helpful hints, make sure that the dull gray side faces up and then the shiny black side faces the canvas. All right, so again, only tape up here at the top. That's important. And then come in with your traceable and then only tape that up at the top here too. And there's a little bit of an overage there, so I do I, I do go ahead and tape that to the back there as well, because I try to just line this up with the base of the design to go ahead and match right there at the edge. So line it up with the edge, exactly matching the edge of the canvas, and then that will give you a little bit of excess here at the top. You'll just fold it over, tape it on the back there. It's a little bit bright, but all right. So, and then, Basically, just kind of, you'll have a little bit of excess there too, but do make sure that both of your, both of our horns are going to be in the, in the shot there, and fully on the canvas. So I, I have all of this loose and free again, only secured at the top, loose and free. What that allows me to do is, as I'm tracing, which we have a pencil with the kit too, and it allows you to lift and check your work as you go because it's very difficult to line this back up whenever you're done if you discover that oops I missed a spot I didn't see it so check your work very well whenever you're done tracing and just make sure you have everything in place and then when that is done then you will lift this off but again it, it being very flexible in this position where it's just secured at the top allows you to check your work as you go and see it I'm going to go ahead and turn that this is what it will look like once it is traced on your canvas so this is a great help for beginners. We love this. All right, so I'm gonna turn that to face you. That gives you a good idea. We're about to switch cameras and we're gonna start with our painting. So here we go. Don't want to stop video, but let's go to, there we are. Lift this off. Now I use scotch tape, which is a bit more sticky than the washi tape, so it's really secured. So if you use the washi tape, it'll lift that off. All right. Wonderful. Okay, so this gives you a good look at some of the kit supplies. You'll also have. Let me grab. Looks like here. So little sack you'll have a washi tape all your supplies in there you'll also have a little party blowout <laughs> all right good times okay and then you'll have a permanent marker that comes with the kit as well so if you would like you can line out the outline of this too if you're a little bit concerned about losing your trace you can certainly do that. I'm going to go ahead and just leave mine as it is and just be a little bit more careful, but that's why I do include this. I include this for um, signing at the very end. 
Also, it's helpful if you want to really firm up all the line work on the outside, maybe some lines that you're concerned about, because paint will cover this and sometimes cover it to the point where you can't see what you trace. So if you're a little concerned about that, that can also be a nice helpful hint for beginners as well. I'm going to go ahead and place this off to the side since I'm not using this today. Um, here is your paint kit. I went ahead and took it out of the box. So it, this is all your beautiful paint kits. You'll be able to use this for uh, many paintings. There's a lot here. So I've got that started. And then I've got a little set up here to begin with. I did go ahead and get some titanium white and some Mars black started. But let's go ahead and talk about that to begin with. I'm going to position this over here. So when you do get out your paints, Little explanation about acrylic paint it does set up and dry very quickly sometimes within five minutes um, so you want to make sure that every time you're done using your paint make sure and put the cap back on so it keeps it really fresh and you'll see how there is a silver foil covered lining there I go ahead and lift that off all right so now it's good to go I went ahead and squirted out so I have copious quantities of this here in my studio so I go ahead and get out some from a bigger bottle but there we go there's our titanium white and then let's go ahead and take a look at our Mars black there it is I went ahead and put out some there too all right and then we're going to go ahead and work on the background to begin with so some of the background color that I have going I've got some gray and then I've also got a little bit of blue in here and every time I do this painting, it always ends up being a little bit different. So sometimes what's even shown in the model will come out differently. But here is some primary cyan blue. Let's go ahead and lift off that top. And we'll do a little pea-sized dollop there. And then let's go ahead and get some Viridian Love. This color is one of my favorites. Always makes beautiful turquoise or teal colors. Ah, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab some bright yellow green. I'm in the sunroom of my studio here in Guthrie, Oklahoma, at the Tipsy Artist Paint Palace. And it is still hot in Oklahoma, so I have the fan going over here. All right, let's see, what else, what else? I'll tell you what, we're just gonna go ahead and start with that to begin with. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and place my pencil off to the side. We have our napkins over here. Um, we've got our family of brushes. Let's introduce them to you now. This is the Mama Brush. And then we have the Little Buddy Brush. And then I have a Little Bit Brush. And then I'll have some backup nearby here too. Alright. So, put my mouse up here. Let's get that out of the way. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the Mama brush to begin with. We'll go ahead and get it moist, do a little dab on a paper towel. Let's grab a little dollop of the titanium white. Place that off to the side. Let's do a tiny little touch of the Mars black. I'm going to push that back and forth. We're going to make some really pretty light gray. We're starting with our background first. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and place this into the background. I'm going to go ahead and be, I'm going to use the flat side of the brush as much as possible. We're going to hold that brush a little bit over to the side. That'll give us a more of a parallel to the canvas hold. Gives us a more gentle touch. I'm also pushing in some pure white as I go, and I'm just crisscrossing these strokes vertical, then horizontal, then vertical, then horizontal. Pushing that in. 
And this is a very playful part of the painting process. I'm going to be very carefree with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and dip into a little bit of that viridian. So just a tiny little touch of that. Let's kind of push that off to the side. Now I'm going to work that into that background and continue on with that push that's real light and a little bit of that vertical and then horizontal. Almost just make it feel as though you're pushing in little squares. All right, now let's go ahead and push in a little bit more pure white over here to this side. And you can see there's still just a little hint of that meridian in there. And that's really pretty. Now let's go ahead and do a little tiny touch of that primary cyan blue. We're going to work that in. We'll push that back and forth. And a little bit of white. Again, little tiny squares. And just work it back and forth. You can see how this is just a really pretty abstraction that's starting to occur. And you can work in a little bit of those colors here and there. Add back in a little bit more of that primary cyan blue. If you want more of the viridian, then push that in too. We're starting to get a nice thick layer of paint resting on the surface. So you can start to play with a little bit of some texture. So what I do for fun is I use the end of the handle here and I can do like little X's into the paint. Let's bring that closer to the camera. See how that's creating some of that texture? All right. You can do little loops. That's fun too. Maybe a little squirrely lines. All right, just have fun with it. And if you don't like it, then just reapply more paint right over the top. But while the paint is still wet, that's an important time to work in some of that texture with the end of the brush, because after it sets, it won't receive the texture uh, from the instrument anymore. So that is important. All right, we've got our bright yellow green. Now, now my brush is still wet. I want to make sure that the paint does not dry on the brush. That's very important. Remember I said that the acrylic paint does sit up and dry very quickly. Let's just go ahead and let that rest into the water. Let's go ahead and take out some of that bright yellow green. We're going to go ahead and do a little dollop there. Just moist and we'll dab on to the napkin. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of that bright yellow green and just work that in. Get a little shadow in there. I'm going to move that back. Let's grab a little more white. Push that back and forth. close to the antler and it's going to require a little bit of cut in work around that shape. So I'm going to need a smaller brush. Alright, let mama rest in the water. Let's go ahead and take our little bit brush here. We're going to push into a little bit of that white, a little bit of the gray, and we're going to go ahead and work that in around the shape of the antler. Outer, I'm sorry, the horn, not the other. Oops. The horn. Alright, so there it is. A little bit of cutting work. And I want to get that texture. See how there's just a line coming in, so I'm going to make that transition. A little bit more subtle, so I'm going to work that back into the background, do a little bit of cross stroke back and forth into it. Now 
And then you can also come right back in with Mama. I'll draw it off a little bit. And you can feather out that stroke where it softly blends into the background. Add a little bit more white here. And let's grab a little bit more of that bright, a little green, and a little bit more of the iridium. To make some uh, turquoise here. So I'm going to grab some primary cyan blue, viridian, and white. We're going to mix all that together. That's going to give me some turquoise. I'm still using my little bit brush and I'm going to go ahead and work that around the horn. Back into the mix here a little bit, a bit more white, and have her kind of smooth out that transition, kind of feather that out. Also hold it more like a pencil to a nice fine line edge around that, those shapes there. That's helpful for cut in work. I'm going to feather out those strokes a little bit. Let's go a little bit more white. I'm grabbing some more white here, a little bit more gray. Start to push that in around that shape. Mama rest, come back in with some of that turquoise and the white. And we're going to work this around the horn. Green. Some of that meridian crisscross back and forth. And some very playful, fun abstraction happening there. More the white now. Looking so pretty. I love it. Alright, let's do a little bit more of that gray. I've got my Mars black and my white. Let's 
put under that shape here. A little bit of that back and forth, back and forth. Picking up some of that white now. Picking up some gray. It's almost like making little lines. Vertical and then horizontal. So it gets to be a pretty large area in here, so I'm going to rinse out a little bit here, and then I'm going to switch over to mine. Press, and then let's go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of our titanium white, tiny little touch of the Mars Black. Those two back and forth together, and then let's go ahead and just work this in again. All right, little tiny strokes, it's like we're making little bitty squares here. Alright, so if you like it to be quite a bit more neutral, of course you can leave it a little bit more subdued like this. Or you can start to work in some different colors as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more of my bright yellow green. We'll do a little hint of that here. Again, light little strokes. That brush hold again is you, when you want to try to keep the brush parallel to the canvas. That gives you a light hand. And a little bit more of that turquoise. Crisscross here, back and forth. Switch directions, light, gentle hand. A little bit more of that viridian. Getting back and forth. Alright, so you see how pretty that is. Another white. Viridian. Let's go back and forth again here. Right hand. We're getting some nice texture there, so I'm going to go ahead and take the end of the handle here. And let's just do long lines, like crisscross back and forth into the paint. See how beautiful that texture is. Love it. And do another little scribble there. Just take a little bit and a soft little scribble over here too. And a little bit more water to that. Now remember, I know it feels bold to do some of these things, but you can always just paint over it. If you don't quite like how it looks out, 
So I'm gonna do a little loop, a little loop. play a little bit more with some abstraction. I'm going to add some little touches of some cadmium yellow in there. There's our cadmium yellow. We're going to do a pea size amount. orange to that. We need to subdue it just a little bit. A little pea size amount. Alright, so how we subdue this is that little bit here, a little touch of black, add that to my cadmium yellow and then a little bit of white. Yeah, so that kind of takes it to more of a taupe color. And then we're going to do these little plus signs in here. So I'm going to little dashes. A little bit of white, and I go right back up to the top of that. This makes it a bit more subtle, even. Oh, that looks good. Just looking over every time I do this painting, again, it ends up being just a little bit different. So sometimes I want to see what I want to do. I'm going to grab a little bit of this viridian over here. I'm going to do a little crisscross back and forth on this side. Okay, and then we'll get a little scribble in there right over the top. Still using a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of the black now. And we're just going to do little tiny dashes. Out. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of white. Come next to that a little bit. Right, I'm going to show you something here. So, got Mama. Let's just say, hmm, I don't know, change my mind. You can do that. You can kind of do a little wash over the top. A little bit more white. That's what's fun about abstract paint. A lot of feeling, a lot of expression. A lot of playfulness. And you can certainly change your mind.
little bit again. Come back in that transition. Let's make some more turquoise. Pattern if you want, a little scribble in there. Bring it closer, you can see how that looks. Very nice. I'm going to dot in just a, a light pressure. A few of those. A little bit right in there. Just for fun. Now I'm going to grab some more Mary Magenta. We have a little light touch of pink in here every now and again. Now this definitely takes it into a new realm. So if this is a bit bright, of course, you know, everything is optional. So this is like a hot pink. We're going to take a little buddy, add a little bit of moisture. Let's go ahead and take that into the primary magenta. And then I'm just going to do this, not that much, but do a little light drag. Just a hint here and there. Add a lot more water to that primary magenta, and then we'll do a light drag up here. Let's go back with Mama. A little bit of white. Got some water running on the edge of my brush. I need to dry that off. Let's go ahead and a little bit more white, just right over the top softly blend into that primary magenta, make it quite a bit more subtle, and then scribble into it a bit. Alright, so for this paint, I just want just about that much primary magenta. I don't want that much in this one. So again, very subtle on that. Alright, so I feel like we've got great work on our background, so I'm going to go ahead and shift to our beautiful Highland Cow here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and work in the horns to begin with. So I've got my little bit brush, and I'm going to go ahead and use, we pulled some cadmium yellow earlier, so I'm going to use some of that, and our titanium white. And then our Mars Black. Alright, so those are actually all out of our plate. So I'm going to grab some of that titanium white. Little tiny touch of the black. Gives us a light gray. And then a tiny little touch of the cadmium yellow. We're going to warm that up a little bit, give it a creamy quality. Need a little bit more paint than that, so I'm gonna grab another bigger dollop of the white, super tiny touch of the black, 
for a very light, light gray, and then a little tiny touch of that cadmium yellow. Let's work that in. It warms it up a little bit. It's just a very light tote. And we're going to put this in the top of our horn here. I'm going to do a little twirl with the end of my brush into that paint. It'll help load up my brush, but also twist out the top of the brush into a nice, fine point. Do the same thing here on the top. So, so pretty. All right, I need a little bit of some brown with our gray. So here's how you make brown. You actually take your orange. We had our cadmium orange out earlier. Let's take a look, see, there it is. And then we're gonna do a little black. Mix those two together, equal parts, and that will give you some brown. Using little buddy, I can actually use the line edge of the brush, hold it like a pencil. Go up the length of that horn. Super lovely, but it needs some transitioning. So now I've got a little bit, about a bit more of that taupe that I've mixed up earlier, which was our white, our black, and our cadmium yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of come in right over the top, add a little bit of water. A soft fade between those two. Just a little bit of an overpaint right over the top of that brown, so you get a soft transitional fade between the two colors. A little bit of water, maybe that taupe color. And then over the top. And if you end up seeing just a, a line between the two, re-wet your brush. I'm gonna come back with little buddy, more of that brown. And take a little bit more water and softly fade in over the top that way too. Just a little bit of back and forth between those two. And a little more moisture. We have more water this time. So we have a soft fade between the two. Looking really good. Okay, so next steps here, we're going to need to start working in. Actually, you know, I'm going to work on the nose next. I'm going to make sure and get some of those facial details in first before we start doing hair. I want to have our hair be the very last thing that we do so that you can have the freedom to do a little bit of like hair over the top that might actually kind of fall over the top of the nose a little bit sometimes or parts of the ears. All right, so let's rinse out. Let's mix up a lot of brown as a base. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of our cadmium orange. Nice big rounded dollop of that. Get a visual, that like that. And then we have our black. Use a little buddy now. 
grab some black, mix that in with our orange. Yeah, so we have lots of pretty brown now. So I'm going to go ahead and work this into the ears. There's my husband up there sneezing. He's having allergies. Big time. He's actually really far away from us, but you can probably still hear him. Because his sneezes are so loud. God bless him. All right? <laughs> Alright, ears, little rounded ears. Boy, that kind of looks like Mickey right now. Don't worry, we'll fix that. It'll get smaller and more subdued as we do the hair over the top. Just getting that basic shape in. All right. And let's add a little bit more black, make it more of a teak brown, a darker brown. And we're going to go ahead and do this little line in here. Get that in place. Follow this, got my brown still working over the black into the orange. I'm just gonna put all of this on the edges. You wanna move the brush almost in a way as if you're just, it's like you're combing hair. You can turn the canvas a little bit too to help you get a better angle, but I'm going to do a light little line just all the way up to the top of that too. Alright, switch over to little bit and I want to make sure we get a few of these details in so we don't lose them. So I've got a little bit here and I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more black and that brown. We're going to twist it out, get a nice fine point. We're going to make sure we get those nostrils in there. That's an important detail. It's an important feature on the face. So we don't want to lose that. Let's do the other side. Alright, just like that. And then there is this tote that's right on the front of the nose here, too. We want to make sure we get that in place. So if you need to mix up more of that, it is white. It is a touch of black. And it is a touch of the cadmium yellow. Let's push all those together. Let's twist it out there. Now, with this little 
curved line happens, we're going to come under that with this soft color. And we're going to come in between those little nostrils right there. And then we're going to come underneath the nostrils. And then make a straight line down to here. And a straight line down to here. And then fill that in. That's going to stay light. All that is the front of that nose, and it needs to stay light. Okay, let's bring that a little bit closer there. All right, now I'm going to come back in, same brush. I still have a little bit of that light taupe on there. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and work in some of this orange with the black. So we've got a little bit of that brown now. And it's okay if those two come together. But I want this to be kind of a lighter brown. So I'm gonna work in more of that color we just made for the front of the nose. And we're gonna add that to our brown to make a really light brown. And right where the end of that nostril happens, right in through here, we're going to go ahead and make a line. And we're going to make another line that comes down to here, too. And we're going to go ahead and pull that out. Okay, make that a little bit lighter, that lighter brown there. And then we're going to come up all the way. We're going to do it like, almost feels like you make a little parentheses here, another parentheses here. And then it goes a little bit around here. And then we're going to come into this little shape, into where that nostril is, and we're going to come back there. And then we're going to firm up some of the darkness. We're going to come back in and do that too. But this gives that little, it's almost like a rounded shape here, and then rounds it in there. this pattern right through here too. I'm going to go back to the dark brown. Add a little water. Make it more fluid, easier to move. Still using my little bit brush. Let's twist it out, get that point of our brush to a nice fine point. curve there. Re-emphasize those little dark spots and then come here and we're going to firm this up with that dark brown here too. dark brown and we're going to re-emphasize this dark line that comes across again. back into that toe with a little bit of that brown and then come back over this just a little bit kind of a curved shape 
Get a little bit of white, give it a little highlight here. A little bit of white. out and then a little bit of shading over the front of the nose let's grab a little bit of black with the white make a really light light gray it's too dark much lighter and we're going to push on a little bit of light gray right over the top here, just kind of fill that in. Alright, so it's looking good. I feel like we've got a lot of that detail, that important detail down. Now I'm going to come back in with some of that taupe color. I'm going to work that in here. Kind of blend, transition that from that brown. And brown. And we're just kind of putting this in like little hair like strokes. So I kind of push and then pull, and push and then pull. Grabbing a lot more of that darker brown coming over the top. heavy shadow that comes in here so I'm going to grab a lot more black to really darken that brown. And I'm going to do a little push right in the center and kind of come down like slip it underneath the neck there. So then these little strokes kind of feel like you're making little parentheses. And then we're going to come in with a bit more shadow in here. And we're going to come in with a lot of light that will come in over the top. So, but right now we're just trying to get that under shadow in. So using a little bit brush and adding a lot more of that dark black for that darker brown. Of course, y'all remember this is much lighter, and that will come when we start to do the hair over the top. But again, working in that shadow. Go back onto that light brown. More of that taupe in. get more brown going. We've got our cadmium orange again with our black that mixes to our brown. I'm going to make it a little bit more of a rusty brown so I'm adding a lot more orange in with it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and push that and again just getting that base. Now 
And now we're getting into a pretty big section over here. So I'm going to go ahead and let a little bit rest a little bit. And then we're going to take our mama again. And we need a lot more of our orange. Big dog of the orange. And it's got a little bit of white. And our orange. A little bit of white. And our black. So you really want this to be a lot lighter in here. And I'm also going to still push into a little bit of that cadmium yellow. Just take a touch of that. Push that in here too. I'm going to let this taper in. I'm going to do a big section here of this lighter, almost like a rust color with the mama. And we'll give it more hair texture in a minute, but right now I'm just trying to get really good coverage for that base underneath. And this just helps us kind of block it in. I'm going to grab a little bit more white. Make it up a little peachy and light. See, we want to make sure to protect the shape of that ear, so I'm going to come around that ear with this lighter peachy color. Gorgeous Highland Cow. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of that really fun light peach color. Put that a little bit over here too. That's our black, our orange, making that brown, and add a lot of white to give it a nice peachy quality to it. And we can make it much lighter. All right, now we're gonna hold up here at the top. We're going to do these little curves. This is like our little hair shapes over the top. Now remember I said it was going to get a lot lighter. And that is about to happen. So I did some firm pressure with that mama brush. There's our little line. And we're going to just hold the brush like a pencil and just kind of curve down and then lift off with a light hand. You do have to make sure that it's very thin here on the edge where you get like little thin lines. I think I may switch over to my little buddy here for some of this too. Black, our orange, our black. OK, 
cadmium yellow. This is all the fun little bangs that come in over the top. See, we've got those details in place in the front, so now we can have a few of those little bangs that come in right over the top. A lot of white in this mix. Might need warmth in there too so I'm going to make sure we've got more cadmium yellow to dip into if we need it. It's going to come in over the little ears, the little hairs come in here. It sounds like you just kind of push down and curl, it's like a little it kind of feels like you make a parenthesis shape a little bit. That will lift off with a light hand when you're done. And again here. Make sure your little buddy doesn't get too thick with paint because what's happening is the bristles get full and then it makes your lines really thick. And sometimes that's nice up here when you need more thickness of the hair, but when you get it when you get out towards the end of the stroke and you need it to be very tapered and thin, then that can start to create problems. So I'm gonna rinse out. And that one's very loved. I use lots of little buddies that are a little bit older, so I'm going to switch over here to a new one. You can see very thin because he's fresh. He's making a little bit more of those delicate lines a little more easily. Some more orange in here too. And that orange is giving a nice little pop.
need some little white highlights in there too. Go back in with more white. Give me kind of texture with it too and maybe some thicker amounts of that in there too. Remember, you can come back in with some darks. And then come back in with some light, kind of play with it a little bit. Sometimes I'll just put in pure white over the top too. Those highlights are really pretty. So I'm just dragging out all of that pure white over the top. And it will just softly blend with those other warm tones. Start to work this in on the back here too. And again, that stroke is very similar, a lot of curve to it, like a little, like a parenthesis shape. And start from the back and then pull down in a curve. I'll do a lot of mixing as I make this transition back and forth between the darker brown and the warmer tones of the peach and that orange. So again, a little recap here on this part that comes down. Again, we've got a lot of white. Mixing in with that brown 
So that's orange and black to make our brown and that white, which makes it really light brown. And don't forget about a little bit of that cadmium yellow that we can mix in there too. And again, start from the back and then kind of come down in what almost looks like a parenthesis. Just pull that down. You can even grab a little bit more of that pure orange too and have it come down inside here with little streaks of that running through. And a little bit more white, pull that back up in this section of curves. Just a lot of repetition on this. And you can also try a little bit of the little bit with this too. So here's a little bit and you can do, again starting here to make little thin lines that come through. Again, that soft curve and then lift off with a light hand. So, man, he is looking beautiful. There's our beautiful Highland cow. And there's certainly a lot more playful layering that you can do, but I think we're gonna, sometimes you just gonna have to know when to call it quits and go, yep, I'm done. I think that's, I think we're done on that. 
but it is definitely something how you can see how you could continue to play with it and add lots of different kind of layers. But today we're going to go ahead and stop. So there it is. There's our beautiful Highland cow. Very fun. Again, the painting kit comes with everything that you need. So you can look that up on tipsyartist.com. And we're so glad that you painted with us today. We so appreciate your support. And we look forward to painting with you again very, very soon. Y'all have a beautiful day. Much love to y'all. Toodles.